while traversing the woods, the ranger came across an unexpected sight. A pregnant woman tied to a tree, a situation that caught everyone off guard. Weary and sore, the man trudged through the dense woods, brushing aside branches that blocked his path. His knees and feet ached, and the cold seeped into his damp socks. He would have given up long ago if he had the nerve. Nearby, a ranger sat on a large stump, waiting for his companion who was checking for traps. Glancing up, he closed his eyes briefly. Brown leaves floated down from the trees, almost blotting out the sky. It was a scene he had witnessed countless times, but now it made him queasy. He remembered suggesting to his wife that they move closer to the woods the day he got his diagnosis and learned he didn't have much time left. The doctors had recommended relocating to the forest, away from the polluted city, to extend his life. And so, at 31, Frank quit his job and moved over a thousand kilometers with his wife. Originally given a year, she lived for four. Those were years filled with joy and satisfaction. But as her time faded, so did his. Despite contemplating leaving, he stayed for another six years. Now, in his eleventh year at the cabin, at forty, he had become deeply entrenched in the forest. Exiting the woods, Frank's buddy lugged two traps and a rope with a loop. Frank, seriously thinking of bailing? James asked. They moseyed to the forest's edge together. James, I'm torn. Part of me wants to bolt and forget it all, but another part feels like I'm rooted in this woodland, Frank replied. By the car, they shot the breeze about work and newbie checks. Frank lingered a tad longer, eyeing the disappearing car, then headed towards the cabin nestled on the forest's edge. The single-story dwelling blended in with the trees, almost like it belonged there. Despite its modern inside, signaled by the lone power line tethering it to the nearby village, Frank paused at the sound of a dog's bark. A grand sheepdog bounded his way, tail wagging like crazy. Frank embraced the dog, nearly losing his balance to its excitement. He gave it a good pet and a tight hug. The dog couldn't contain its joy, wiggling with excitement, bouncing around on its paws as it greeted its master home. Hey Roy, take it easy buddy, let's head on back home, Frank urged, his voice tired. I'm beat, he added his exhaustion evident. Like clockwork, Roy calmed down, sticking close to his master as they made their way home. Frank usually brought Roy along, but not this time. The journey was too long, too risky. At home, Roy had a cozy kennel to shelter him from the elements and plenty of food from the land. There was even an emergency stash, though Roy never touched it in Frank's absence. Back inside, Frank peeled off his damp clothes, leaving them outside. He filled the tub with hot water, then made his way to the kitchen. Pouring himself a mug of hot herbal tea, Frank settled in, listening to the tub fill with warmth. See, he struggled with the long treks more and more. Seemed his health was taking a hit, and damp feet weren't helping. They couldn't shake off the cold, teeth chattering away. Roy stayed close, glancing up at his owner now and then. Frank sunk into the hot tub, hardly registering the change in temperature, the warmth seeping into him. He felt so at ease, almost bursting into song. His loyal pup never strayed, glued to his side. Exhausted, Frank caught some TV and turned in for the night. A strange noise jolted him awake. He froze, eyes darting to his dog. With a hushed gesture, he signaled silence. Slipping out of bed, he crept to the door, prepared for whoever dared to intrude. Peeking out the window, Frank kept to the shadows, wary of what lurked outside. Who the heck's sneaking around here at night? The man barked out, but the darkness remained stubbornly silent. Just moments ago, he'd caught sight of a mysterious figure at the window. Heard voices, strange noises, but now... Nada. Roy, sniff him out, Frank commanded, and the dog dutifully began to track. Positioned at the forest's edge, Frank held firm. 
Without permission, the dog wouldn't dare venture into the woods. Then, headlights pierced the darkness. The car revved, bolting off into the night with the dog hot on its trail. But Frank's sharp command halted him in his tracks. Roy returned to his master's side, obediently sitting, eyes fixed on Frank. Looks like they're not afraid of a darn thing, hightailing it into the woods even without headlights, Frank remarked, shotgun still in hand. The dog lingered on the trail a bit longer, but no sign of anyone emerging. Frank dialed up the department, relaying the intel. Their response was swift and resolute, promising immediate dispatch of a brigade. Yet, reality proved starkly different. No one came. After what felt like an eternity, the dog and its owner returned to the cabin. Frank collapsed into bed, but sleep offered no respite. Shadows of imagined threats lurked at the edge of his consciousness, blurring the line between dream and reality. Dawn broke, finding Frank weary from a night of fitful dreams, fraught with fear and frustration. Stepping outside, he surveyed the scene, sensing the lingering presence of intruders. Their tracks crisscrossed the property, disappearing into the woods before vanishing into the night, swallowed by the glare of headlights. Frank grappled with unanswered questions. Who were they, and why had the poachers brazenly trespassed? Their audacity was unprecedented, leaving Frank to wonder who else would dare venture into the forest on such a dark, foreboding night. It had been a few days since Frank laid eyes on those strangers. He prepped for a short jaunt. The department had tasked him with checking out the nearby fourth quadrants. It wouldn't take long, then he could slip back home without a fuss. Roy, you hitching a ride? Frank asked, and the dog stood at attention eyeing him expectantly. Ready to roll, Frank? The man echoed, and the dog's tail started wagging like crazy. It bounded about, barking gleefully, itching to join its master in the woods. Frank didn't think twice about bringing him along. After all, his loyal sidekick had never let him down. With the backpack slung over his shoulders, Frank set off into the forest, trailed by his ecstatic companion. It was just a quick, routine check. As they reached the forest's edge, Frank reunited with his buddies. James didn't waste a moment. He hopped out of the car and made a beeline for his pal, happily giving the dog a pat. They lingered in conversation, their paths diverging. Each had their own journey through the woods. Word has it there was a raid last night, but the folks at the station checked it out the next day and came up empty-handed. Doesn't seem like poachers, and they weren't after anything specific. You catch my drift? James mused. Feels like we're on the brink of a crime wave, don't it? He bid farewell to his buddy and ventured into another stretch of the woods. Frank cast a glance in his direction before heading the opposite way, delving deeper and deeper into the wilderness. Off to his right, a peculiar sight caught his eye. Initially, he questioned his vision, but there bound to a tree, was a figure. His faithful dog stood at attention, awaiting his cue. Roy, seek, he commanded, and the canine began to methodically sniff around. Drawing closer to the restrained figure, Roy halted, studying her face. It was a woman, her wrist tightly bound, contorting her body naturally. The rope had chafed her skin, drawing blood. She lay unconscious, unresponsive to Frank's inquiries. He attempted to rouse her to no avail. The pregnant woman remained firmly tethered to the sturdy trunk of an oak tree. Suddenly the man ordered, Roy, remember the way. They retraced their steps, making their way back to the forest's edge. They covered the distance that previously took hours in a mere fraction of the time. Armed with pliers, Frank retrieved a narrow sled from the basement, utilizing it to rescue trapped creatures, even deer ensnared by traps. Racing into the woods, the German shepherd led the way, with Frank in hot pursuit, the sled clattering loudly against rocks and branches. 
Once more, the faithful dog guided Frank to the spot where the pregnant woman was bound. Approaching her, he was rendered speechless. He knew her. She was the wife of a local banker, a familiar face from city billboards and town events. There was no mistaking it. However, there was no time to dwell on familiarity. With swift precision, Frank cut through the thick cable with his pliers, catching the woman as she fell into his arms, hoisting her onto the sled in one fluid motion. With his snout, the dog nudged the woman's limp arm and gently settled her onto his belly. Frank secured broad straps across her shoulders and guided the sled, carrying the pregnant woman towards the cabin. Despite his morning preparations for the journey, he hadn't anticipated the challenges awaiting him that day. The burden weighed heavily on him. Reaching a lengthy rock, Frank halted to catch his breath, stealing a glance at the woman who had drifted into unconsciousness. Well, Roy, looks like we've got our selvis into a bit of a pickly, Frank muttered, giving the dog a gentle tug on its collar. He warily readjusted the harnesses and resumed pulling the sleed. However, the dirt path was obstructed with debris, leaves, pebbles, and twigs. The sled wasn't designed for such terrain, indicating trouble ahead. Yet, beyond the trees, the anticipated exit from the forest loomed. Guiding the woman into the cabin, Frank carefully laid her on the bed where she drifted into a deep slumber, her breaths labored. The man glanced at the dog. Keep watch here. I'll jot a note. You show it to him. I gotta do my rounds. Who knows what's out there? The dog sat beside the pregnant woman they'd just rescued from the tree, settling onto the bed and stretching out his furry paws. The man penned a few lines, placing the note on the dog's paws before stepping out. He took a brisk walk around the area, returning as the sun dipped low. Frank exited the cabin. Right then, an old beat-up pickup truck rolled in, its age showing. It sputtered to a stop, and a stylish woman in her forties hopped out. She sported a tracksuit and strode over to the man, greeting him with a kiss and a hug before quickly updating him on the girl she'd found in the woods. Initially incredulous, Claire was baffled as she entered the house. But it's her. What's her name? Gloria, I reckon. Donald Valderrama's wife, I suppose, the woman remarked, eyeing the young pregnant woman asleep nearby. We gotta snap him out of it. Claire dashed to the car, grabbing a hefty bag brimming with meds. She rummaged through, tending to wounds and bringing the woman around. With effort she rose but couldn't quite stand. Dizzy and queasy, she struggled. Frank dashed to fetch a mug of chicken broth. The woman downed it in one gulp, munching on homemade bread. Silent, she was a chatterbox post-meal. Then, she dozed off. Let her rest. She didn't wander into those woods for kicks. I say we hold off on the cops. Let her wake up and spill, Claire suggested. They hashed out future plans in the kitchen for hours. The ranger aired his itch to split. Claire backed him, but for now, they were stuck. Suddenly, noise from the bedroom. The dog's paws clacked on the floor, leading the girl back. He was used to his boss, only heading to the bathroom. Nothing more. Waking up, he automatically escorted the stranger there, much to her relief. She requested and took a bath before returning. Donning the clothes Claire provided, the pants fit perfectly, but the t-shirt hugged her belly a bit too tightly. Seated in the chair, the woman eagerly accepted the food. So spill it. How did you end up in this mess? We spotted you. You'd have to be blind not to, Claire quipped. We've decided it's too early to involve the cops, though you should really get yourself checked at the hospital first. No, 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 no. If I go there, they'll find me, the woman exclaimed, leaping from the table. Her eyes held a mix of terror and desperation. Claire and Frank exchanged puzzled glances, unable to grasp the gravity of the situation. After a moment, she regained composure, sinking back into her seat before speaking once more. 
my husband. He sold me off to settle a debt with a local thug before he even knew I was carrying our child. But I won't let them take me. They kidnapped me, dragged me into the woods, bound and helpless. I thought I was done for. Saw a wolf, even. Trust me, there are worse things lurking in those woods than just wolves. Clara revealed, her familiarity with the forest's dark secrets sending shivers down her spine. She hesitated, then continued, So what's the plan? I hate to ask, but if we don't act, they'll do far worse to me than the horrors of the woods. I need to get back home to my parents. Please, I'm begging you. They'll hunt me down if they find me here, she pleaded, gently caressing her swollen belly. Claire and Frank exchanged a solemn glance, silently contemplating their next move. All right, listen up. I'm hitting the road. You hold the fort, Frank instructed Claire. You're no stranger to this place. The pooch will keep you safe. The itinerary's up on the wall. If all goes well, we'll be back by Thursday, Frank added before turning to Gloria. Pack up everything you need, including grub. No pit stops. We're moving fast and quiet. Get ready to roll. Gloria blinked in surprise. She had been gearing up to plead with these kind folks for help. Frank packed some grub into the cooler bag, tossed water bottles into the car, then gave Claire a kiss goodbye and headed for the door. Before long, Gloria, the expectant woman, followed suit. He adjusted the seat for her comfort, realizing there would indeed be stops, probably more than he'd bargained for. It was a lengthy journey, but there wasn't any alternative. Staying put would have meant risking their lives, including Claire's. Six hours had already passed on the road. The woman had dozed off for most of the trip, but now she stirred awake. Sitting up, she shifted uncomfortably, growing restless. It was evident she wasn't feeling well. Suddenly, the van lurched to a halt on the roadside, such a massive vehicle could practically drive itself. She shot him a grateful glance and promptly stepped out of the vehicle. Heading behind some bushes, she began to stretch her legs. Every inch of her body ached and felt numb. Feeling tired? He inquired, turning to the ranger, recalling their warm relationship with Claire. Not tired, really. Just weary. Lost my wife to a dreadful illness not too long ago. The ranger replied with a heavy heart. I associate marriage with sorrow now, but I wish I could still be with her. Wanted to buy us a beachside home, start anew. But being foresters most of our lives, we're tied to the woods. What good is a coastal retreat for folks like us? His voice carried a tinge of sadness. For the next eight hours, they didn't stop. The woman leapt out of the car and pounded the gate with all her might causing the security guard to dash out. But when he saw her, he radioed the homeowners. The parents nearly collapsed at the sight of their daughter. It seemed they were aware she was missing and didn't anticipate her being returned straight home. The woman's father clasped the ranger's hand tightly. I'll never forget, never forget what you've done for my girl. You went up against the wrong man to marry and you could have lost your life yet you didn't hesitate to drive. God knows how far you've traveled to bring her back here. You didn't fear her husband or anyone else, he said. The ranger bid him farewell, eager to get back home swiftly. He sped off, making only quick stops at gas stations. He was in a rush, concerned about Claire. Who knows? Perhaps, who knows? Maybe they're out searching for the girl and Claire would be alone there. She might not have been scared of much, capable of handling a rifle and dropping a guy twice her size in a brawl, but he still fretted over her. Frank rolled in after midnight, slipping out of the car and into the house where Claire was already in a deep slumber. The dog, sensing his master's return, greeted him with silent enthusiasm, mindful not to disturb the sleeping woman. Frank decided it was time to make tracks. He buzzed the department, giving them the heads up that he'd be MIA for the next couple of days. They took it in their stride, as expected. It had been a hot minute since they'd had to shuffle around for someone to fill his shoes. 
Frank started to gather his things, noting there wasn't much to grab. Meanwhile, Claire was also getting prepped, pulling up to Frank's place. So, where are we off to? She asked, a hint of worry in her voice. As she gazed at her man, a mix of joy and concern crossed her face. They were finally hitting the road, but the uncertainty of their destination gnawed at her. She held onto him tightly. Sympathizing with their plight, he pulled her into a weary embrace, holding her tightly. Frank was determined to rebuild their lives in a new place, but their plans were suddenly disrupted. A sleek, snow-white car pulled up to their rural home, shining brightly in the sunlight. Stepping out of it was the father of the woman Frank had saved from the forest, where she could have met a grisly fate. I told you I'd remember what you did. Get in the car, he commanded, pointing a finger. Frank and Claire exchanged glances, then obediently climbed into their own vehicle, following the expensive car. Exhausted from over seven hours of driving, they made only one stop at a gas station, their legs aching and stomachs growling with hunger. But they had made a promise to keep driving, so onward they pressed. Eventually, the white car turned off into a quaint coastal village of cottages, coming to a stop in front of a charming sunlit cottage. Stepping out of the car, the man turned to her, saying, Sweetheart, you've always dreamt of a house by the sea, and here it is just for you. Starting tomorrow, you won't have to work anymore. He thanked Frank once again for his help, handed over the keys, then hopped back into the car to leave. Frank stood there, stunned, clutching the keys. After a moment, they ventured into the courtyard, graced with charming rose bushes. The beauty of the place felt almost otherworldly, like a scene from a fairy tale. Frank could hardly believe this was now his home, although the paperwork in the kitchen confirmed it. With its spacious living area, luxurious bathtub and peaceful bedroom, they explored every inch of the fully furnished house. It was more than just a house. It was a sanctuary. Claire couldn't contain her excitement, bursting into laughter, clapping her hands and wrapping Frank in a tight embrace. Their playful pup had already bounded around the yard and was now thoroughly investigating every nook and cranny of the house, particularly enamored with the cozy rooms and the inviting living area. The very next day, the woodsman made his way to the bank, his heart pounding with anticipation. As he stood before the teller, he couldn't believe his eyes, his jaw nearly hitting the floor at the sight of his account balance. After completing the necessary paperwork, he made his way back home, his mind reeling with the realization that they were now unbelievably wealthy, perhaps never having to lift a finger for work again. It had been a month since Frank and Claire had settled into their rustic abode. Strolling along the shoreline, they reveled in the sensation of the cool sand between their toes. Roy, their loyal companion, frolicked in the waves, his joy evident as he dashed in and out of the water. It was clear that he had found his element in the sea rather than the woods. Frank wrapped his arms around Claire as they took in the tranquil beauty of the ocean. I still can't wrap my head around it all. It feels like we're living in a dream, and part of me half expects to wake up back in our cozy cabin, remarked Claire. Claire smiled, edging closer to his shoulder. We had some good times in that cabin too, she said. The ranger planted a kiss on her cheek before shifting his gaze to the old dog beside him on the shore. Look at him. Even though he's well past ten, he still runs around like a young pup, Frank remarked. Roy, as if understanding it was about him, bounded towards his owner, holding something in his mouth. Frank reached out his hand, and the dog dropped a magnificent large seashell into it. Frank and Clara admired the exquisite seashell decorated with intricate patterns. He wrapped Clara in another embrace and together. They sat on the sand, taking in the serene beauty of the ocean.